In this particular lecture, let's learn how we could create multiple state variables in React. So till this point, we have created this count variable, which is a state variable, and that is one single variable. But what if your application needs to have multiple state variables? How exactly would you create them? So creating a state variable is simple, but you need to understand why exactly would you need another state variable here. So right now, if you take a look at our application, uh, this button actually increments the count value and this decrements the count value. However, let's say if you want to increment or decrement a count by a certain number. So right now it's only incrementing the count by one every time I click on increment and it decrements the count by one every time I click on decrement. But let's say instead of using one, you want to have some other number over there. So instead of incrementing the count value by one every time, let's say you also want to set the increment by variable, which actually increments this count value by whatever value which you set. So in order to track that particular value, we now need to create another state variable called as increment by. So let's create that variable here. So we are going to be using the same logic as we have used here. So I would say const, let's say increment by, which is the name of the variable. And along with this, you also need to create a method or a function which sets the value of this increment by variable. Therefore, we name this thing as set increment by. And we say use state. And over here, instead of passing in the value as zero, we are going to be passing the value as one. And the reason why we do that is because we want to increment the value at least by one. So we cannot have a zero over here. All right. So now once we have that increment by setup, now let's go ahead and let's also add the increment and decrement button for that increment by as well. So in order to do that, first of all, I'll go ahead go down here and first of all let's display the increment by value in a h1 so in an h1 i would say we are incrementing the value by and over here i would simply display the increment by which we have up over there which is the state variable so this becomes increment by all right so if i go back so right now it says we are incrementing the value by one now if i change this to two it would say we are incrementing the value by two. So now let's get it back to one. And let's also add the increment and decrement buttons for these as well. So over here, what I would do is I'll create a button for incrementing the increment by. So over here, I would say increase increment, which is going to increase the increment of that number. And the on click of this one is going to be some function which we are going to define right now. So let's name that particular function as increase increment itself. All right, so now let's define that function, which is increase increment. So in order to define that function, I'll go ahead and define that up over here. So function increase increment. And the job of this function is to simply increase the increment value. So in order to increase the increment value, we use the set increment by function, which we have here. So we say set increment function or set increment by function. And over here, we take the current value of increment, which is increment by, which is this state variable right here. And we simply add one to it. All right. So if I save this and if I go back here, now if I click on this, now the increment is increasing. Now, once we have this increment value with us, now, let's increase the count value by this increment value every time I click this increment button. So in order to do that, there's one simple change which we need to make. And that is in these two functions, instead of incrementing the count value by one, I would now increment the count value by the increment by. So increment by variable over here. And I'll make use of the same variable over here as well, where we decrement the value. All right, so if I hit refresh, if I click increment, the value is going to increment by one. That's because the increment values itself is set to one. So let's increment the value of increment by five. And now if I click on increment, this should actually change the value of count by five and the value should now become eight. So if I click on increment, as you can see, the value of count is now eight. So if I keep on clicking this, the value of this thing increases by five every time I click this. 
and the same applies for decrement as well the value gets reduced by five every time i click this decrement button all right so let's also have the decrease increment button over here as well and let's write the logic for that so i'll simply copy this button paste it up over here and i would say decrease increment and over here we need another method which is decrease increment all right so let's define this up over here so this is going to be function decrease increment now the names might sound a little bit confusing uh, that's because they are but still we would say set increment and we would actually take the increment by whatever we have so increment by and subtract one from it all right so let's go back here and now i could increment the increment and decrement the decrement so let's set it to seven and now if i click on increment the value increases by seven now if i decrease this to four and if i click on increment this should change to 53 so if i say this it turned to 53 so if i reduce it further down and if i click on decrement now the value changes by three so this is how two states could be used or multiple state variables could be used in a react component and this example was just to show you how these two variables actually are in sync with each other such that when we go ahead and update one variable and when we go ahead and use that particular variables value onto some other variable that variable changes accordingly so in such fashion you could go ahead and create as many number of states as you want in a given component so if you want two states to be present in a component and if you want them to be synced then you could easily do that in react so that's it for this lecture in the next lecture let's learn about how to handle user input in react